And here's a Black Series Mandalorian riding the board. Welcome to another Dorklair action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at the D20 Bone Stabber Boar. And I just want to give a huge shout out to D20 Studios for sending out this review sample. They've been super supportive of the Dorklair. I have one of the smaller YouTube channels for action figures. So I do very much appreciate it when companies are willing to kind of like take a chance on the smaller channels for promotional stuff like this. So thank you, D20. Thank you very much. I'll try to be as usual with the promo stuff. I'll try to be as neutral as I possibly can and not pass judgment too much and just kind of show you guys what you're getting into if you order this figure. Uh, they sent me the brown version, which I, I very much like. There's also a black version, which I don't have. I don't really have a way to compare it, but... I, th I think I'm glad I got the, the brown. I, I like brown for a board. It just seems like the right color. And as far as its comparison to previous releases, so the other wolves, uh, it's a very similar piece. It's real thick, uh, not thick. It's very dense and heavy, chunky kind of figure. Definitely a lot smaller than those previous wolves, which makes sense. I think a boar would be smaller than a wolf. Um, very similar, like these bone pieces. Like I feel like this boar is in like the same army as the white bones wolf or something like that like they probably march into battle together and as far as the paintwork goes and the sculpt of the face i feel like this one's a little more i don't want to say realistic but a little more like gritty and less cartoony the wolf had kind of like a slight cartoony look to the face this one feels a little more improved in that regard uh, but anyway, enough chit chat. Let's get into this review. One of the big differences is the packaging. This is a much more traditional window box style packaging. It's not that thick coated cardboard that doesn't have the big styrofoam inserts that the wolves had. Uh, so this is a much more traditional packaging. And this is the kind of packaging that as nice as it is, I don't mind throwing away. I literally could never bring myself to throw away one of those wolf boxes because they're just too nice. But the thing is they take up a ton of space. So this is something I could totally throw away. I did get some damage in the mail. That's why there's like a, a thing there. And you can see right there that this guy is called the Bone Stabber. Okay, so in for a close up of the sculpt paint and articulation just kind of showcasing what we're looking at here uh, my lighting's a little weird i'm in a very awkward position because he's super low to the ground or low to the table and then the tusks cast shadows so it's kind of tricky to light this thing that's why the, the snout is kind of in the in the shadow a little bit but i think the the head sculpt is definitely more gritty Maybe it's just like an, it looks like an older being than the wolf did, but it just seems less cartoony to me. A little more like angry and just, yeah. And then there's articulation in the jaw. So you can swing the jaw open and a little better lighting on the mouth there for you to take a look at that. And then it's got all sorts of bone accessories, attachments with leather detailing, washes, and lots of crazy sculpt work. It's got a tusked human skull. I wish this skull would come off. I'd totally pop it on a figure, but it's it's either glued on there or just part of the main sculpt. And then this piece is easily removable, so we can take a look at that separately. There's a face. It's like a stretched piece of skin and then a face cut into it. And again, with the skulls, that one's got a, you know, a horn coming off the top of it. But yeah, this piece just pegs into a sort of rectangular hole on the back of the saddle, I guess. And then you have the horns that are kind of shaped in a curved way over here on the back of the saddle. So lots of intricate sculpt work and details. The saddle is fully removable. I'll show that after these, uh, these pieces here on the legs are also removable. And here's the underside of the guy. And you can see there is a torso articulation point there. And we'll do the t we'll do the articulation later. The tail does not move. That is just in that position. It's kind of soft. It doesn't really, it's not articulated. But yeah, there's your close-up of the boar. And then here's a quick shot of him with the headgear on. So you can get a sense of how he looks with that on there. And it's pretty cool, but I think I prefer just the unmasked head. I just like it without the mask on, I think. But that... You know, it blends in well with the rest of the armor as far as I'm concerned. Next up, let's do some comparisons so you can see how this boar scales with a few other figures. 
First of all, here he is next to the Golden Axe Dragon. This is the blue one that came with Tyrus Flare. And here he is next to the Dewback from the Star Wars Black series. Here he is next to a Mythic Legion's horse. Now this is a kit bash that has Athon's gear on the Headless Horseman's horse. Next up, let's see how the Boar Mount looks with a few figures on him. First up, here's a Goblin. And this is probably my preferred character to have on here. Like, the boar is a little smaller. It's not horse size. It's not the size of those wolves. So a little bit of a smaller character makes sense. And I just feel like a goblin would ride a boar with all these like bone armor things on there. And then here's the Storm Collectibles Dwarf Gilius on top of the boar. And I definitely feel like he's a bit large for this. And then, although not an aesthetic match, I think the size match is pretty good for a Masters of the Universe Origins figure. And then for kicks, but way too big in my opinion. Here's a Masterverse figure, which doesn't even go low enough on there because the skirt is hard and it like hangs lower. So you'd have to really mess with a figure to get it to sit right on there. And here's a Black Series Mandalorian riding the boar. I think the size works well, even if it's again, not an aesthetic match. And Super 7 Ultimates Conan, again, for me, he's maybe a bit large to be riding this creature, but the looks kind of match up for these two. And as we get into the accessories segment of the video, here's a look. I've removed all his stuff and he's just a crazy wild boar without any of his stuff on. And I think this look is sick. I almost want like a minimalized saddle just to have him be a little more basic. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty cool look right here. Okay, and for accessories, you've pretty much seen it all already, but here they are removed. So here's the saddle and this piece is separate that you can peg onto the back. And then I also have removed these pieces that peg onto these holes right here. And here's a close up of one of those tusks. It's got skulls sculpted into the side there. And then he's got the head piece that has a nice metal chain attached to it. And then he's got these pieces that attach to the legs. The two of these that go on the front legs and these have a peg and they're very stiff. So you're gonna wanna heat these up when you remove them and put them back on. And then you have this piece that goes on the back. There's two of these. And again, with a peg and also heat up when you swap these. Finally, we have the articulation. Like I said before, the jaw is hinged and we have a head that's on a double ball that can slide up and down and it can come side to side a little bit and it can twist just a little bit. It's fairly minimal movement in that head, but you can see where that movement is. As you articulate it, it may push this piece up and you just gotta slide that back down in. Lots of movement in that shoulder. They can swing back and forth. You know, the, the sculpt is gonna get in the way a little bit, but there's quite a good range there. And then you have, um, you know, an in and out because it is on a ball joint. So that can rock around like that. Some slightly ratcheted joints here. And I feel like this figure is a little easier to articulate than those wolves, which were very stiff. And then you have sort of a knee articulation down here, two ball joints, one above the foot, and then one at the uh, hoof there. And it's got like a lot of range. So when you do like the wider stances and stuff, there's a good amount of movement in there. And then at the back of the torso, one thing that the wolf did not have is a ball joint at the torso and this allows for a good range of movement here and then you have a ball joint at the back thigh area that can come in and out and it can swing pretty much all the way around almost this joint here was really difficult to get moving i heated it up and it's still pretty stiff but you can hear those ratchets and that can get a, quite a lot of range there and then you have some action in the knee area and the same kind of thing going on with the foot, with the two points of articulation, one at the hoof and then one above the foot. Once again, thank you to D20 Studios for sending out this figure. It's a very unique piece, a boar mount action figure for your 112 scale figures. Very cool piece. Thanks for watching. And until next time, may the force be with you.